Hi, and welcome to the uh, video lecture of um, software engineering methods uh, at uh, La Peranda University of Technology. Uh, this year I'm going to try something a bit different and uh, provide the course contents in uh, 30 uh, pre-made, uh, 10 to 15 minutes long presentations which are on video and available throughout the course for each participant and also publicly available for later use by anyone who considers uh, that th this information is something that could be useful for them. I know that the amount of uh, uh, recordings is uh, well the total amount is quite long it's something like seven and a half hours but uh, I did some calculations and considered that the Lord of the Rings trilogy is actually a bit uh, something like only 100 minutes longer than all these recordings combined. So uh, consider this as a sort of a more boring version of Lord of the, Tr or Lord of the Rings. Anyway, uh, the software engineering methods course is usually our first uh, course on software engineering for people coming from uh, other countries and it's the first course taught in English in software engineering. Uh, for Finnish speaking students this is the second course so basically what it means is that our uh, topics are quite fundamental things in software engineering and that we have only limited amount of, uh, of uh, advanced topics here. So if you have already done some software engineering course where you have been talking about stuff like uh, processes, process models, UML, software design, you might find our content to be somewhat repetitive, but still uh, this is something that you should know, especially if you are going to uh, one day graduate as a master's, uh, as a, a well master of science in software engineering. So uh, basically, uh, our study guide says on this course that the aims, are, as listed here, are that the student is able to participate in the analysis and design of software and, info and information systems and that uh, you will be able to understand the problems associated with the modern systems and software work and that you will be able to use the UML language in design. Uh, basically meaning that after this course you will not be fluent UML designer, you will be able to understand other people's design and also express your ideas on UML, but you are not a graphical programmer or, or UML expert to any degree. We will go through all the different types of diagrams, obviously, because that's one of the central topics of this course. But you will not be uh, you will not be taught how to uh, craft a timing diagram or things like that. We will uh, talk about the more general topics and aspects. Like I said on this slide, the contents of this course are features of modern software development, requirements, analysis and modeling, UML use cases, class diagrams, dynamic modeling, state diagrams, architectural design and uh, the methods and uh, processes in software and systems development. So basically talking about how software is made, how games are made, how uh, air control systems are made, uh, what's the difference between uh, anti-lock brakes, embedded software systems compared to mobile games. Talk about the general stuff about how software is done, to understand why we have to do it this way, uh, to get some sort of an idea how this uh, happens in real industry and to uh, prepare you for working in real projects. 
to the largest degree we can actually do on these courses. And of course the idea with these uh, short video lectures is to give you always one uh, topic at a time about these things. So uh, the objective of this entire course, I'm not talking about these videos I'm posting YouTube, I'm talking about the entire course uh, software engineering methods. The idea is that the, to understand the problems, uh, why uh, we get faulty software, why do our designs fail, uh, also to be apply object-oriented approach to analysis and design of software and information systems well basically saying that uh, well working with some modern approach on software design and uh, understand the different uh, the different roles of people in the software process and the meaning of methods and processes in the development of software and systems. Obviously, the more essential content or let's say more practical content, the keywords I just said were more or less the uh, marketing points of this course. Something that's a pedagogically valued uh, a way to define what we are doing without actually saying what we are doing. But what we are actually doing here is uh, go through uh, the most common uh, ways to develop software, starting from the traditional waterfall approach, talking about the more adaptive methods, iterative methods, prototyping, uh, going through agile approaches, Scrum, which is really popular today, uh, extreme programming and also talk about something like rational unified process which is more heavyweight process but it's something that can uh, expand or administrate uh, as large project as necessary because scrum and extreme programming have more or less uh, sort of sanity cap in these processes how many people can they manage uh, well, on the other hand, we will also be talking about how to use Unified Modeling Language, UML, to define what we want to do. Uh, the idea is that, of course, if we are doing software for people, or users, or customers, or whoever, we have to collect the requirements, and from those requirements we have to go towards uh, the actual software architecture, define what we are going to do, then start to develop things and based on those designs get the components together, do integration, uh, quality assurance and later actually deploy a functional software. This chain of events or chain of activities is something that we will be doing on this, talking about on this course and the design of different things based on descriptions in UML is something that you will be doing on the practical side of the work. So basically what each of, this, of you students should be able to do after the course software engineering methods is to uh, define things with UML. It's not tool to uh, make ultimate a be all end all design because you can really really get bogged down with the different details and things like that if you decide to go uh, fully into the UML but you should be able to use it to decree where you can share your ideas and transfer knowledge from one organization to another because it's sometimes really difficult to express your ideas especially if you are working in an expert organization which may not uh, have the same working lingo as you. For example if you are doing software system for a legal firm, uh, lawyers and people like that. They may not understand a single word what you are saying about software engineering, debugging and programming and stuff like that, and you may not understand what word, any word about their world, the evidences and the uh, witnesses and the legal processes. Uh, so 
you have to be able to express yourself and share ideas uh, so that you can actually collect the information and on that the UML is sometimes really a nifty tool also uh, the one of the main ideas here is to understand how rational unified process works how it differs from something less uh, administrative models like Scrum or Extreme Programming and how the software process is defined with rational unified process uh, because if you understand that you can understand the other less uh, heavyweight models and use them efficiently in your own projects or well basically anywhere so a uh, couple of pointers on the course contents here uh, well, usually uh, the students say that this course is easy to pass, but it's actually quite hard to get the top grade. You don't have to do any programming work on this course. I want to express it clearly now on this first video that on any of the activities on the software engineering methods course, we, I do not expect you to provide a source code or functional program or anything. I want to see the design and I want to have your explanation why you went with that design but I do not expect you to uh, provide me with an example program for example for some of the exercises or models we will be drawing later on the course. So, uh, um, the other problem, of course, is that there's a huge wealth of information here. Uh, last year I calculated that this course has something like 500, 600 slides of PowerPoints. Of course, uh, that's a huge amount of little details, but I, I wouldn't say that you should start to re remember everything. This is also one of the reasons why I made this recordings. I want you to understand the big picture. How is this related to design and development of software? Why we have to do this and uh, what the process actually do, uh, include? Why are people doing this? Why? What's the thing we are trying to define with this particular UML diagram? I'm not going to be the person say, uh, asking about what are the main drawing rules of package diagram I want to uh, I want you to be able to explain me why package diagram is sometimes used but I'm not going to be asking about uh, is it okay to use uh, for example class definitions in package diagram and well anyway uh, a couple of more pointers here well, as I said, this is not a programming course. Uh, every task is possible to do just by reading through the material, thinking and proposing a logical or, in more common terms, sane solution. There's no definite right answer in most of the things, but there are definite wrong answers in most of the things. So think what, read material, think the presented problem and propose a solution that's sane. That's more than enough. And that's more than some people in previous years have done. Of course, this is not a difficult course. Some people might disagree with me here, uh, but this course is not that hard. This is the first introductory course for international students and follow-up course on the fundamentals of software engineering course in, for Finnish students. So anyone with reading comprehension skill is able to pass this work. Don't worry about it. Uh, teamwork is allowed and we are, I actually even encourage people to do uh, the course exercises and projects uh, with other people. I think it's simply a good way to learn large amount of things. But however, it is cheating if you copy or buy your project work from internet, from your colleagues, other students, uh, other team, uh, or try to use last year's team you found online somewhere.
Every team has to make their own original contribution and if you are caught cheating here, you will be kicked out and you will be reported to the faculty. No exceptions, no excuses. I have to do this and there's nothing I can do for do to amend these rules. Do not cheat, please. I'm begging you. It's a real hassle and it's a huge amount of documentation, but I will report you if you do that. Okay, so uh, some couple uh, slides, uh, sort of a summary on what we will be doing. So, the dis discuss topics, a huge amount of them, and for each one of them I will be giving you this so uh, sort of short summary presentation. Uh, also, go see NOPPA pages for this course. All the material or links to the material will be published there and, well, we will be having two project works uh, but these change yearly so I will not be discussing these any, in m any more details on this presentation. And, uh, well, what else can I say? Good luck for the course! And let's hope that you find this new approach to these uh, summary uh, videos or short presentations useful.